Hey guys, how are you all? Um, today I am social distancing. It's Friday night and um, you know it's really sad. There's still a lot of people out and about and going around like nothing's going on in the world but we know the entire world has been disrupted like never before. So I think why not become productive and use this downtime to educate ourselves, to learn, to grow. You know, one of the biggest benefit of being digital is, you know, I'm not kidding. My friends from overseas, orthodontist friends are telling me how lucky I am that I was already, you know, way ahead of many, many people in adopting the digital workflow. Hence, we've been able to manage by closing our practice. We've been monitoring uh, treatments remotely. We've been able to even issue aligners and post them while doing attachments later on. We've started the first virtual consultations um, powered by SmileMate technology. Um, like so much exciting stuff, actually. Um, and, and we're using a network of dentists around us to do the records for us so then we can actually literally start the patient uh, via dentist examination without even going into our offices. We've been um, really, really lucky that we're able to do this, you know, to be able to help limit the spread of this virus. And I um, just want to celebrate Friday night social distancing. So I thought today one of the common themes that I get asked in boss is, as is like, unfortunately, um, Invisalign has not shown or, or, or when they go do these accreditation courses that are just literally nothing, um, you know, they, the, the, the reps just show you very quickly how to use the tools, but you really don't know how to use the software fully. So uh, people have asked me how to use 3D tools and I use it all the time. There is no way I would ever uh, approve a digital treatment plan or a clean check without doing a 3D tool. Like it's pretty rare because there is no technician who places teeth perfectly, unfortunately, even after 20 years. But hey, this is the current state of affairs. So I'm going to show you how we're going to use 3D tools in this case. So um, I'm creating modifications. And what will happen is as I click this, 3D toolbar should come up. And there we go. <laughs> as usual, Windows, um, I wish Invisalign started a, uh, a version for um, Mac. But anyways, look, I'm going to come back online in a sec. Oh, we're back. We're back. Yeah, we're, hang on. Just bear with me. The tools are just loading up. So essentially, I'm looking at this clean check and I want to pick up the teeth myself and fix it because yeah, as you can see, this treatment plan number five, we've gone back and forth with the technician, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, if you look at those finished positions of the teeth, they're not looking great at all. Okay. So forget about the diagnosis and treatment plan. Uh, the whole purpose of this is to show you 3D tools. So firstly, if you look at where the teeth came from, where they are, you know, um, I think relatively okay because obviously there will be a phase of refinement. But what I really want to do is I want to grab some of these attachments and place them in a better position. So what I'm going to do is click on attachment. I am moving it around. Um, I can even right click on it, make it a bit bigger if I want. Okay. So the reason I'm moving it to the incisal third is because um, aligners are the stiffest at the incisal third of a tooth. Hence, they, they tend to allow much more movement, a more predictable movement. And I like to cover the width of the teeth, especially with a wide lateral incisor like that. Um, so if you look at what's happening, you know, um, the three as well. And again, I like to place them a little bit lower here. They just tend to be more predictable. So I'm kind of using my 3D tools to do these kind of cool moves. Um, let's look at what's happening to the lowers. I also want to move this up a little bit and uh, that up a bit. So um, again, because if you're placing uh, the attachment more closer to the cuspal third, it tends to be um, more predictable or the movements will happen more predictably. So let's look at this movie. So compare. So this is obviously what we're doing. We're tucking the teeth back. And um, 
I think when you look at it, there's a low end size extraction case here. We're obviously doing this. And because we're retracting, we're not going to actually even use, um, we have space, we're not even going to use class 3 elastics. So here we are, I think this looks fine. Now I'm going to show you how I don't like those positions of the two teeth, right? You can see that they just don't look correct. So for example, if I want to move those centrals, right, and I just want to rotate it, I'm going to click on tooth. And I'm just going to press this and I think it needs a little bit more mesial rotation. So I'm just going to move it myself like that. And I want to give it a little bit more of distal root tip. So I'm going to use the correct um, arrows and I'm just going to give it a tiny bit more distal root tip. Because the zenith of the upper central gingiva is always a tiny bit distal to the long axis. So, you know, I like to tip them at teeny tiny bit distally it looks nicer for small aesthetics and um, and here obviously there's worn incisal edges so there's going to be some uh, resin bond ups or some reshaping at the end so we're not going to worry about incisal edges we will worry more about gingival borders and margins um, the centrals are in line with canine and overall I think it looks okay in this particular case we do not want too much expansion because of recession. So because we don't want that, um, to be honest, I would actually build a bit of IPR here because when you have a low end size extraction, you do end up getting black triangles. And, um, and if I just add a bit of IPR, just to help with that black triangle, it will be kind of nicer for the patient as we're finishing. Um, now, let's look at the lower occlusal view. So if I want to, I don't like the position of the threes here. Again, we've got worn incisal edges. That is always a bit harder. I think we're going to do some IPR here as well. These threes look pretty buckled to me. So if anything, we want to make sure we do not move them any more buckly at all. We just have to keep them tucked in. Um, this tooth is um, moving distally, so there's a there's like a uh, sorry mesial root tip and a distal crown tip, and you'd be wondering why I've got a horizontal attachment rather than a vertical because vertical is more for angulations and vertical is more for rotations. Um, to be honest, I love these horizontals. I think they work as well, and um, I think they work really really well. Now this is a bit of a mad case, okay? Um, I would not be putting so many attachments. So let's look at, this tooth is extruding, so we need an attachment. Extrusion is not predictable. Here it's extruding, 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 okay? So we do need some attachments here. Let's look at what's happening to this canine. So 4.3 is just rotating 6.8 degree mesially. I'm actually gonna rotate it a bit more. I think it needs a tiny bit more. Now you can even pick up this arrow and just do it yourself like that. Um, and I'm overcorrecting here slightly. And um, you know, you can see the effect it has on the arch form. So because of that, I reckon we do need an attachment. Uh, the, re the reason incisors have an attachment because it's a lower incisor extraction case. I reckon this attachment's not needed. So I'm going to click on attach. I'm going to click on this attachment. I'm going to right click and remove it. Okay. I don't think it's needed. But to be honest, the, the lower premolars are extruding and that's because we don't end up with a posterior open bite. So let's look at here. At uh, this case, as I said, we can't expand much. Overall, expansion doesn't look bad. And if I wanted to increase it, um, I think that canine looks a bit inset. So I might just move it a tiny bit more buckly. So just with my arrow, if you want to do a lot of movement, you can use the arrow. Or you can just click here and you'll see the teeth moving. So I'm actually moving it lingually just a bit more buckly. It'll just um, uh, look nicer in the arch form. Yeah, it looks quite in standing. So I'm just going to move it a bit buckly, okay, because I think it needs to. Um, you could even tip it buckly if you don't want to move it bodily. You just use this, and uh, we're now tipping this buckly. And let's look at it from the front. I think it looks better than before. Um, I think both 1, 3, 2, 3 are very tipped lingually, so we're going to tip them a 
tiny bit buckly because canines are usually more prominent than that. So as you can see, it can be quite fiddly. Um, if you zoom in, it's easier to move the teeth and I'm just clicking here as well. So this is a tipping angulation movement over um, and you know, I think we're not moving premolars much, so this will create a step. It's, this is a hard case, so we are going to move premolars very, very slightly, very, very slightly, and we're going to move them all buckly very slightly, because I think otherwise there will be a contact point issue. So again, I can use this arrow, and I could stop here. And there's always, you know, as we know, there's refinement, right? So with refinement, and this is this case has got an anterior, upper anterior Bolton, so we do need IPR on the upper. Um, so, uh, you know, this is just a quick demo of the 3D tool. Um, I might show you a bit of rotation on this as well. You can use um, um, a, an arch tool where you can completely... Um, correct the entire arch form in different points. So for example, I, I do this to the arch form. Now if I've made a mistake and I feel like I shouldn't have done that, I'm just going to simply click undo. And when I click undo, it goes back, so it just reverts to the last step. Um, and I love this compare with original because you can always just see, hey, what's happening. Now that's a lot of buckle movement for the um, lateral incisors. And, um, and one of the things with this would be, you know, um, talking to patients about gingival recession, making sure the root doesn't come too buckly, um, either if the biotype is thin, that it actually stays a bit tucked in lingually. So um, this is a case where we have to be very careful. But overall, I kind of like what I'm seeing here. And uh, I love the Bolton's tool. I use it a lot to kind of look at what's happening because obviously we're removing a lower incisor here. Um, you can see that um, um, maxillary is excess in the anterior region as well as overall. So IPI in the maxilla is a good thing here. So guys, that was just a quick demo of um, uh, what I'm doing. Uh, there's just um, uh, so many cool tools. And uh, there's other aligner companies as well. Invisalign is not the only one. Um, I love Angel Align software, very similar to Invisalign software. So easy to, it's intuitive, easy to use. Um, actually, before I finish, I might even show you how to use uh, precision cuts. So if you decided, oh, I forgot my elastics here. I want to put elastics. And you wanted to do class two elastic here, you can put a hook on this tooth. Or if you think, no, I don't want a hook. I want a button cut out. You can just drop it onto a tooth. And um, if I just drop it onto this tooth, it's kind of, and then the technician will adjust the attachment um, for you. So I'm just going to undo that because in this case, we do not need um, any kind of elastic. And this is more a diagnosis issue where do you need a button cutout over elastic hook? You know, what is appropriate here? Uh, so for example, if I want to drop a button cutout here, and we're going to be using, uh, oh, it, it won't let me because of optimized attachment. Let me just do it here. You can see how it does it. And now I can just move that around because I want my button cut out to be away from the attachment. So just by hovering on it, I can move it around. Okay, this is kind of cool as well. Um, and uh, I can just right click on it and remove it. So guys, so this is a quick demo. I'm just going to submit these changes um, and... Um, to Invisalign and um, yeah thank you very much and hope you're all um, enjoying uh, social distancing <laughs> and having some social distancing um, internet parties and thank you for spending your Friday night I look forward to another live video soon bye stay safe stay healthy stay positive um, stay smiling bye